Uh, Spy Darlings is a horror fantasy musical, quite a, a tongue-in-cheek musical uh, horror fantasy, uh, about two uh, girls, a gay couple, that are trying to fiddle the British benefit system um, to survive and support themselves, as many people are nowadays, uh, which makes it very contemporary, because of course at the moment that it's very much in the news about how people are trying to survive and cope with benefit cuts and such. Um, but being a horror, of course, it has a lot of very unusual angles and shoots this way and that way and and uh, lots of spiders and <laughs> murders and blood and guts and love it, yes. <laughs>Tiffany Wells, who plays the character Gina, um, is a very good friend of mine and um, she came to me and said I've been cast in this film called Spy Darlings and I had to do a song and we're looking for a song trying to decide what to do. I told them about you as a songwriter, um, do you think you might be interested in doing a song for me? Which of course I agreed to and uh, so I did a song called Sing a Happy Song and we recorded it and uh, the um, producers at Pro Vague and the director Salem liked it very much. Um, and so I said, great, uh, if there's anything I, else I can do, then um, just ask. And they said, well, actually, um, we do kind of need another 12 songs. <laughs> so I said, yes, let's do it. So here, of course, we have uh, what, was Clark, what was the main stage area. Not looking quite so glamorous now as it was when the diva and the girls and uh, Sugar Rush and Susie, of course, were here. Um, we had some drapes pinned up here with gaffer tape, no expense spares. Um, when I received the script, uh, the songs, the positions of the songs within the script were already marked, so I kind of knew where they would belong. The trick was to find out and discover what exactly was required uh, by Salem and also to work out what kind of song to do. And I think they decided from the very beginning that they didn't want it to be a specific genre of music. For example, if you see something like the, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, you can hear that all of the music is played by the same band and it's all of the same genre. And I think we wanted really to have a good mixture um, which worked well for me being a, a pop writer in the respect that if you write pop you can kind of cover pretty much any genre. Um, so it was really deciding on the particular scene and the character and, and what the lyric content would need to be that made me think that would work or that would work and, and I tried, uh, with, I had my own studio which is good so I tried lots of different things for different songs, different styles and different ideas um, and I think that by the time I'd reached a point where it felt right, I, ha I have this thing when I'm recording and write songs that I've written in particular, where it suddenly reaches a point where I get very emotional, uh, almost tearful, and that's the point where I know, okay, that's it, I've reached that point now. It's kind of like a, a sort of an instinct, I suppose, uh, in a way, or some type of divine intervention, I don't know. but. Um, so when I, once I'd reached that point, that was the, the time when I presented it and said, well, okay, what do you think of this? Thankfully, pretty much everything that I put forward, um, uh, Salem and, and uh, Gabriel and Rahel were happy with. Um, there were one or two things that we needed to tweak and change, and obviously as time goes on and you're working further into the production, um, you, you think about different ways of mixing songs and, and changing things here and there. But generally speaking, I think pretty much everything that I presented seemed to be okay, um, perhaps because I'd spent plenty of time sort of trying to figure it out. And then it came down to lyrics, um, finding what was going on in Salem's head, because obviously if you read a good script, as Spy Darlings is a very good script, you, you can pretty much pick up what's going on from that. 
but I also wanted to understand some of the background and some of the history of the characters in order to be able to present a lyric that I knew would be the sort of thing that they would say or they would sing. The diva is a transgender, screwed up kind of person with lots of hang-ups and lots of um, history. Um, and she comes into the club uh, as a middle-aged performer and she kind of fronts the, the show where the girls are dancing, obviously with a view to uh, ripping off the men and emptying their wallets for them. Um, but she, uh, so she kind of fronts the show. I could quite imagine that possibly she maybe has one or two clients of her own, but generally speaking, it's really about keeping the girls in line and keeping things moving. Um, and she performs in the club as well, but with the main character, Tix, she has history as well, which we kind of touch on in the film. I don't know you. I never knew you.